I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick. Today, we're going to discuss the 2020 update to the NIH asthma guidelines for individuals 12 years of age and older. I had the privilege to serve as one of the members of the expert group that developed the guidelines, which represent the first update to these guidelines since 2007. And there are some very important changes for us to be aware of. I'm going to emphasize the preferred approach in the guidelines, recognizing that there are alternatives given that go beyond the scope of our discussion. And I'll mention where the World Health Organization GINA asthma guidelines differ from the NIH guideline. Let's start with mild intermittent disease or step one therapy. Here, there's no change from the 2007 guidelines. Short-acting beta agonists or albuterol is used as needed. Of note here, though, the GINA guidelines recommend using, even for intermittent disease, a combination of low-dose inhaled steroids whenever a beta agonist is used. Let's move on now to mild persistent disease, or step two therapy. In 2007, this was straightforward, an inhaled steroid alone. In the current guidelines, and this is a big change, there's a choice of preferred therapy either an inhaled steroid alone, using albuterol as rescue therapy, or a protocol where we use both an inhaled steroid and albuterol together, but only use it when symptoms occur. The GINA guidelines give as-needed ICS for motorol in a combination inhaler as a similar option here. The idea here is that patients benefit from receiving inhaled steroids when they're experiencing symptoms in order to decrease inflammation and the likelihood of them going on to have a full exacerbation. The advantage of an ICS alone is that there are less breakthrough symptoms. The advantage of as-needed combination ICS beta agonist therapy is that you get the inhaled steroid and the beta agonist only when you need it, thereby having a lower total dose of inhaled steroid over time, but you have no more exacerbations than you do with an inhaled steroid daily alone. For patients needing step three therapy, that would be moderate persistent disease. The 2007 guidelines recommended stepping up from a daily inhaled steroid to low-dose combination ICS LABA therapy, continuing albuterol as needed for breakthrough symptoms. The 2020 guidelines, and this is another big change, recommend using daily combination low-dose ICS for motorol along with, and pay careful attention here, low-dose ICS for motorol as reliever therapy as well, thereby giving more inhaled steroid whenever there are symptoms. The acronym SMART therapy, which stands for Single Maintenance and Reliever Therapy, has been used for this. The GINA guidelines recommend that in step three, the use of any inhaled steroid LABA combination therapy is appropriate, and this is an alternative in the NIH guidelines. For patients requiring step four therapy, that is those with moderate to severe persistent disease, the 2020 guidelines recommend bumping up to daily and PRN medium dose ICS for motorol with an alternative choice of medium dose ICS LABA combination therapy or even an ICS with a LAMA all using albuterol for breakthrough. If an individual is not controlled on daily medium dose ICS LABA therapy, then we now have as an option adding a LAMA, long acting muscarinic antagonist, for step five care. Remember, LAMAs had not been studied for asthma back in 2007. They now have been, they work, and they can be a real advantage for some patients. Remember, for patients with severe asthma, particularly those with frequent exacerbations, not controlled with standard therapy, we can use high-dose ICS LABA, and there is also now a whole new class of biologic agents, the monoclonal antibodies, that are available, usually with specialty consultation. These are some big, important changes. I'm Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.